It's a question that's been on a lot of people's minds for a long time, and the COVID pandemic this year brought it up again in a new iteration. With people all over social media claiming that we humans are the virus, some completely in earnest, some heavy with sarcasm, it feels like a good time for us to explore the question. Are humans an invasive species? Because so few of the things we discuss on this channel have simple, straightforward answers, let's go with the literal meaning of this question. Are humans, by definition, an invasive species? You might be surprised to learn that not everyone agrees on the exact definition of invasive species. In fact, some people might call these alien or non-native species, but we'll stick to invasive for right now. An invasive species can be defined as one that is introduced to an ecosystem to which it is not native and manages to survive. But that's really just the definition for non-native species. Not all non-native species can be classified as invasive species, because the important part of the designation here is that an invasive species manages to not only survive, but thrive in the new ecosystem, often to the detriment of native species. Why do invasive species hurt native species? An invasive species has evolved in its own home ecosystem, where it probably engaged in an arms race between itself, other species occupying the same niche, predators, and parasites. Coevolution within an ecosystem causes species to develop adaptations that allow them to survive in that ecosystem, based on environmental pressures like predation, competition, climate, and resource availability. If a species with all of those nifty adaptations suddenly appears in an ecosystem different from the one it evolved in, those adaptations might not fit into the current arms race of the new ecosystem. In some cases, a species with poor fitting adaptations might die rather than be able to survive in the new ecosystem. But species that become invasive do so because their adaptations give them competitive advantages over native species. You can check out my recent Turf Wars challenge video for an example of native and invasive shrubs in North America. Once a species becomes invasive, it can outcompete similar native species occupying the niche it uses, sometimes even causing native species to become endangered. This can cause ecosystems to cascade into multiple failures, including lost species and lost function, and these failures in turn can cause problems for human health, safety, and economies. The life strategy of invasive species also often make them difficult for people to eradicate, and billions of dollars are spent every year trying to mitigate their effects or remove them from the landscape. So are humans an invasive species? Just like the definition itself, nobody seems to be able to agree on whether or not we fit it. The Smithsonian article I've linked in the description breaks this question down into four points, which we can briefly discuss here. First, even though the definition we were using didn't include this condition, the Smithsonian article argues that an invasive species must be widespread. I don't think this is entirely true, as some invasive species remain fairly localized, depending on their adaptations and ecosystems available, and some are so newly introduced Introduced that they haven't had the opportunity to become widespread yet. But it is true that humans are present pretty much everywhere on Earth, as well as circling around it outside of the atmosphere, and even contemplating colonizing places like the Moon and Mars. The second point is that an invasive species must be introduced. This point is where a lot of people quibble about humans not fitting the definition, because conventionally humans are the ones doing the moving of invasive species, intentionally or unintentionally, to their new ecosystems. So the argument goes that we can't be introduced because we're moving ourselves. It's an interesting technicality. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with this point, but it is important to consider that this argument may be made by people who hold very anthropocentric or human-centric views of the world, and who would be made uncomfortable if we treated humans like every other species of animal. Third, an invasive species is not native to the ecosystem in which it becomes invasive. This is also a complicated idea. Our species, Homo sapiens, originally evolved in Africa, but rapidly spread outwards and established populations on every continent except Antarctica. This expansion was happening while some famous megafauna, like mammoths and giant ground sloths, were still alive. Those species have since gone extinct, and their ecosystems have done some evolving in the thousands of years since, and humans have lived in those ecosystems during that evolutionary time period. So does this make humans, as a species, native to all of Earth's continents 
continents except Antarctica? This is a sticky question that gets into a lot of complicated sociological discourse that's still happening, so I'm going to stay away from it for now. But as I say so often on this channel, I'm here trying to give you pieces of information so that you can make your own determinations about these big questions, not preach definitive answers where none exist. Fourth and finally, invasive species, by virtue of their competitive advantages, cause harm to the ecosystems they invade, which can include loss of native species as well as harm to human health and economic stability. This is pretty obviously true of humans, and I hope that isn't a surprise for any of you. Humans have, due to our big brains, opposable thumbs, and complex social structure, caused a lot of changes on Earth, from altering the physical landscape to introducing invasive species to new habitats. Some people would even go so far as to say that humans are, in some way, the cause of all environmental problems ecologists are trying to solve. So on our list of four points, we've got a few yeses and a few maybes not sures. Both the Smithsonian article and the IUCN, the organization responsible for listing endangered species, have determined that humans cannot count as an invasive species. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be mindful of how our actions shape the place where we live and the other living things we share it with. So what do you think? Should humans be officially listed as an invasive species? And if so, what use would that designation have? What can you do personally to lessen your negative impact on the environment? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon, then go check out my Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and check out my other project called Nature Check. I'm going to be doing my best to keep up with my publishing schedule this spring, but I have a few important milestones for my PhD coming up, so check out my social media for information on when new videos will be dropping. And as always, Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.